Welcome to Wings of Arrow Advanced Education and Research Organization. To know more, visit our official web page www.wingsofarrow.in. Find your dream aviation and aerospace jobs at www.wingsofarrow.in. Now we are going to learn how to find the maximum stress in a beam flange. Consider the beam shown in figure, which is assumed to have a complete tension field width. If the cross sectional areas of the flanges and stiffeners are respectively 350 mm square and 300 mm square, and the elastic section modulus of each flange is 750 mm cube. Determine the maximum stress in a flange. The thickness of the web is 2 mm. Here we consider the beam. Let me write the given data. Cross sectional area of the flanges A suffix F is equal to 350 mm square. And cross sectional area of the stiffeners A suffix S is equal to 300 mm square. Elastic section modulus is equal to 750 mm cube. Work thickness T is equal to 2 mm. Depth of the beam D is equal to 400 mm. And length of the beam Z is equal to 1200 mm. Load intensity W is equal to 5 kN and breadth B is equal to 300 mm. Now we have to find out the maximum stress in a flange. To find the maximum stress, we must know the angle of diagonal tension. From a consideration of the total strain energy of the beam, we can find out the angle. Then write tan power 4 alpha is equal to 1 plus T D divided by 2 into a suffix f divided by 1 plus t b divided by a suffix s. Here all values are given. Solving this equation with those values, we get the angle of the diagonal tension alpha is equal to 42.6 degree. The maximum flange stress will occur in the top flange at the built-in end where the bending moment on the beam is greatest and the stresses due to bending and diagonal tension are additive. Direct loads in top flanges F suffix T is equal to W into Z divided by D plus W divided by 2 into tan alpha. Solve this equation with appropriate values. Thus the loads in top flange F suffix T is 17.7 kN. Hence, the direct stress in the top flange produced by the externally applied bending moment and the diagonal tension is indirectly proportional to the flange cross-sectional area. By dividing top flange loads with flange cross-sectional area, we can get the diagonal tension. Then the diagonal tension is 50.7 Newton per millimeter square. In addition to this uniform compressive stress, local bending of the type shown in figure occurs. The local bending moment in the top flange at the built-in end is found using maximum bending moment expression. Write maximum bending moment m suffix max is equal to w into b square into tan alpha divided by 12 into d. Substitute the appropriate values and simplify. We have the maximum bending moment is 8.6 into 10 to the power 4 newton millimeter. The maximum compressive stress corresponding to this bending moment occurs at the lower extremity of the flange and it depends on the elastic section modulus of each flange. Then the maximum compressive stress is 114.9 newton per millimeter square. 
Thus, the maximum stress in a flange occurs on the inside of the top flange at the built-in end of the beam. It is compressive and equal to 165.6 newton per millimeter square. Thus, the required maximum stress is 165.6 newton per millimeter square. These parts of aircraft wings usually comprise an upper and a lower flange connected by thin stiffened webs. These webs are often of such a thickness that they buckle under shear stresses at a fraction of their ultimate load. Did you know? The moon's effect on Earth's tides is slowing down the Earth's rotation. The moon's gravity exerts a pull on Earth which is partially responsible for the ebb and flow of ocean tides. Physicist George Darwin discovered that the way the moon's gravity pulls Earth's water is gradually slowing the rotation of Earth. Our day gets longer by about 0.002 seconds each century, which adds up over billions and billions of years. Darwin also concluded the moon will eventually spiral outward or bit more slowly and create a longer month. The lunar surface is littered with man-made objects. Along with an American flag, astronauts initially left a patch, honoring the fallen Apollo 1 crew on the moon, as well as a plaque that reads, Here men from the planet Earth first set foot upon the moon, July 1969 AD. We came in peace for all mankind. Since then, as the Atlantic has reported, approximately 400,000 pounds of material have been left on the moon. This includes unmanned space vehicles, ascent and descent stations, moon buggies, golf balls, and a family portrait belonging to Charles Duke of the Apollo 16 mission. Astronauts have brought 842 pounds of moon material back to Earth. Between 1969 and 1972, NASA reported that 2,200 separate samples of lunar rocks, core samples, pebbles, sand and dust from the moon's surface were brought back to Earth over the course of six flights. The samples came from six different lunar exploration sites. If you have further inquiry or requested video, drop down to our mail, wings of arrow at the rate gmail.com don't forget to subscribe for more updates for the time being take care stay blessed inspired and fly high